Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. In just a minute, I want to read from Charles Haddon Spurgeon's morning and evening daily devotional. This is certainly a classic. Uh, If you don't have a copy of this, I really encourage you to go get one. Uh, Spurgeon, 19th century uh, preacher over in England, uh, called the Prince of Preachers, just a passionate man who really loved God. He's going to make some comments on Colossians chapter 2, verse uh, 6. And so what I want to do is I, I'm just going to read those first few verses from Colossians chapter 2. The whole idea is uh, is to be built up in Christ and to, to learn to walk in Christ. And this is so important for us that these Um, these metaphors and these analogies that we hear all the time, uh, they struggle to basically convey to us that the scriptures are revealing a a God to us who's real, who wants uh, wants to, to dwell among his people and with his people. And so this isn't meant just to be information, it's meant to be transformation. It's uh, actually meant that we that we would uh, not just know about God, that we would know God. And there's quite a difference, isn't there? So let me read from Colossians chapter 2. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have on your behalf, the Apostle Paul says to the church at Colossae, and for those who are at Laodicea. That's another city that was in that region. For uh, all those who, who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So if you're looking for the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in this world, Please understand, the Apostle Paul's making it very clear, as does the entire New Testament. Those are found in the one who claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. These bold claims of Jesus aren't just meant to go in one ear and out the other and sort of just sound like, you know, Sunday school repetition, things that we sort of took in and memorized. But no, we want, the Apostle Paul wants our hearts to be encouraged. That is, wants our hearts to have courage poured into them and that we would be knit together in love. That's with God's people. And that would be an amazing antidote, wouldn't it, to to the division and acrimony that we see in the world around us if God's people were actually united in Christ. And that's one of the beautiful things I love looking out in our church as we gather knowing full well that we have people that have all kinds of different views about all kinds of different cultural issues, political issues, economic differences. So there's diversity of all kinds, not just one kind of diversity, but many kinds of diversity. And the reason that they can come together when they would normally be natural enemies on certain subjects, the reason they can come together and display this kind of love that they do is that they're united in Christ. In whom, Paul says, Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with persuasive argument. For even though I am absent in the body, nevertheless I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good discipline and the stability of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. And see, when you are, when you are rooted, you start to bear fruit. So root begets fruit. No fruit, probably no root to be found either. So be rooted In Christ Jesus, he says, and then he says at the end of verse 6, so walk ye in him. And let's see what our older brother Charles Spurgeon has to say about this. You know, he's kind of, as I say, 19th century guy. So the Apostle Paul all the way back to the first century. And now we're going to hear from 
uh, a, a younger, older brother of ours, Paul, the old, older one that we've heard from today. Now we're going to hear from a younger, older brother, Charles Spurgeon, 19th century. He said, if we've received Christ himself in our inmost hearts, our new life will manifest its intimate acquaintance with him by a walk of faith in him. Walking implies action. Our religion is not to be confined to our closet. We must carry out into practical effect that which we believe. And so he's saying belief will affect, if it's, if it's properly held belief, if it's truly held belief, if it's authentic held belief in faith, it will result or overflow in a certain kind of behavior. Belief begets behavior. So I love that, a practical effect, that which we believe, that carries it out, all right? If a man walks in Christ, then he so acts as Christ would act. For Christ being in him, his hope, his love, his joy, his life, he is the reflex of the image of Jesus. And men say of that man, he is like his master. He lives like Jesus Christ. In other words, they're the character of Christ, the life of Christ begins to blossom in us as we continue to walk in the, the power of the gospel to transform us and change us, redirecting our affections, re, uh, reordering our priorities and, and, uh, and the way we see others. Everything changes because we're new creatures in Christ. He is like his master. He lives like Jesus Christ. Spurgeon goes on to say, walking signifies progress. So walk ye in him. Proceed from grace to grace. Run forward until you reach the uttermost degree of knowledge that a man can attain concerning our beloved. And he's talking there, of course, about our beloved Savior and Redeemer. Walking implies continuance. And so um, this walk of faith in Christ is action. This walk of faith in Christ is progress. And now this walk of faith implies continuance. There must be a perpetual abiding in Christ, Spurgeon says. There must be a perpetual abiding in Christ. I had to say that again. I needed to hear it again myself. I've been a Christian too long. And I, sometimes we rest on our laurel. Sometimes we we coast on yesterday's manna and we need to be stirred up all the time, right? So how many Christians think that in the morning and evening they ought to come into the company of Jesus and may then give their hearts to the world all the day? But this is poor living. We should always be with him, um, treading in his steps, doing his will. Walking also implies habit. When we speak of a man's walk and conversation, we mean his habits, the constant tenor of his life, or her life for that matter. Now, if we sometimes enjoy Christ and then forget him, sometimes call him ours, and anon lose our hold, that is not a habit. We do not walk in him. We must keep to him, cling to him, never let him go but live and have our being in him. As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, the apostle Paul wrote in verse six. Persevere in the same way in which you be, have begun. And as at the first, Christ Jesus was the trust of your faith, the source of your life, the principle of your action, and the joy of your spirit. I gotta read that list again. I love lists, don't you? As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Persevere in the same way in which you've begun. And as at the first, Christ Jesus was the trust of your faith, the source of your life, the principle of your action, and the joy of your spirit, so let him be the same till life's end. The same when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and enter into the joy and the rest which remain for the people of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, enable us to obey this heavenly precept. I so appreciate 
the Apostle Paul, and uh, and I so appreciate Charles Haddon Spurgeon. This from uh, morning and evening. Uh, what a what a inspirational uh, stirring up of uh, and, and a redirection, I guess I should say, of our wills, an awakening, if you will, of our our, our spiritual aware, you know awareness to be proactively walking in Christ and walking in light of the gospel. And man, that that is just a power. That's the, that's the way we start to see transformation in our hearts and our lives. And that's the way every encounter gets transformed with another person. Why? Because you're constantly aware of the presence of Jesus in your life. And so when you encounter someone and, and they say something you don't like or, or they slight you in some way or or they try to lure you into something you know is is not God honoring for your for your life or for your mind or whatever it might be. You just have the the mind of Christ, and so you're walking in light of the way Jesus would respond to those things. Well, that's so powerful. All the while, I want to also remind us that beautiful song that we sing. He will hold me fast. He does hold us fast. We can trust in him. So if for some reason you have you have strayed uh, or uh, you have dropped back some way in proximity, uh, your proximity to Christ is is not what it used to be. I just want to encourage you how how Jesus welcomes us back to him, how eager he is for you to turn to return to him. Uh, yes, he's eager for you to turn to him if you have not done that, that too. But so many of us need to be reminded over and over and over again how eagerly Jesus receives, how gently Jesus receives repenting sinners. And uh, our all of life uh, for us is repentance and worship. And I'm so glad to know the gospel is true and to trust in this good shepherd who is Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this. I pray that you would indeed um, enable us, stir us up, um, empower us to be able to walk with you this day. Um, Lord, if we haven't um, uh, done that, if we haven't in some way exercised the discipline of practicing your presence as we go through this day, even as we as we brush our teeth, eat our breakfast, even as we drive to work or just go into our office in our home and begin to work or go into the studio, whatever it might be, Lord, may we do all that we do mindful of your presence with us. And as well, may we do all that we do for your honor and for your glory. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for inviting us to walk with you this day. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.